Hi, I'm Hazel Floyd. I was born in 1924 in Grady County, Cairo, Georgia. I grew up on the farm in Grady County until I was 19 years old. In between the time, at 16, I married and I went to North Carolina and I got pregnant, Gloria. She had two children, Sharon and David and I came back home because I missed my family so much. I couldn't be away from them. I was born into a family of 10 children, seven boys and three girls. I lived my life on the farm until I married the second time. That was 19 and 45, 19 and 45, when I came to Robbins Air Force Base. I met my husband, H.R. Floyd. He was 21 years old and I was 19 and we got married. And then I had my second child, Mary Ruth Bowman. She has th three children, two boys and a girl. So now here I am spending Christmas with my family and enjoying every minute. But I will back up and tell you a little bit about growing up on the farm. And when I, I grew up on the farm and walked to school every day, my mother would make us our lunch in a bucket and my oldest brother would be the one that would divide it out among the other three. And one day, my mother fixed his our lunch and instead of taking the lunch, he picked up the bucket of lard that we used to cook with and he carried it to school and when he called us all together to give us our lunch he had a, a box of lard and we didn't have any lunch until we got back home that evening. They were four of us. Then I played in the cornfield and the cane fields and we played hide and seek around in the yard all the time. We didn't have no inside lights or toilets. We didn't have, we got our water, water from the well. We would have to let the bucket down in the well and draw the water up. We didn't have no bathtub. We bathed in a tin tub, that's what, in a foot tub that we washed our feet in. That's the way that we grew up. We had Sunday clothes and we had Sunday shoes. We would wear certain shoes during the week or we'd go barefooted and we would uh, have weekday clothes that we wore. We'd have one or two dresses that I had for Sunday and one pair of shoes I had for Sunday and I didn't get to wear them until on Sunday to go to church. And then when I grew up and I married at 16, that's when I left there and I couldn't stand it when I got to where I was North Carolina I couldn't stand living a night or several nights without my mother and seeing my family I talked to my mother about a letter and I asked her could I come home and she sent me back a letter and told me that I could come during the time I was got pregnant and I came back and my child was born in 1941 When I, I married my second husband, we didn't have anything. We didn't have anything. I would make his lunch to go to work on the base. Then he would take a nickel to get him a drink, a Coke to have with his lunch. I'd put some, uh, one sandwich and some fruit. And uh, we didn't have a car. He rode to and from the base with a friend that worked over there. And he paid him 50 cents a week to ride with him. It was just a hard time, hard time for us, uh, us to get started, but he, we did it, we did well. And so I've been happy ever since. June the 8th of 2006, I lost him. And I've had to live by myself the rest of the time, all this time. I with I have a, two daughters, Gloria Stone and Mary Ruth Bowman. and. One lives in Brooks, Georgia, and the other lives in Blairsville, Georgia. I'll be going back home tomorrow to my place in Warner Robins, Georgia, where I've lived for 58 years. Oh yes, I have a favorite lot of good memories, on the farm especially. I remember when I was a little girl, 
It was about a mile from where I lived is where I would get to go. My mother let me go and I had two friends that lived there and we'd go down to the creek and that's where we would go swimming. And I wouldn't let a child of mine go off like that by herself to go to swimming in a creek, but my mother let me do it and I wore a little dress with my underpants. That's what I went in swimming with back then. And that was what I can remember. I can remember the house that they lived in. And uh, I remember the father. I was kind of afraid of him because he had a long beard. And I, my daddy didn't wear a long beard. And I couldn't, I just couldn't take the long beard. I was afraid of him. Oh my goodness, it was, I can't remember, but we had moved to Brunswick. It was like in the late 40s, my husband Floyd and myself and Gloria, and we lived down there for a couple of years. And during the time there, I met a next door neighbor and her daughter was crocheting. And she came over and showed, I watched her crochet some. And then she came over and told me that she could help me if I wanted to learn to crochet. Well, she did. She got, told me what kind of book to get. And I got me a crochet book, double and single and treble and all the different kinds of thread. She showed me how to start with putting the needle and how to get it started in crocheting. Chain a long link and then you go back down and have your row and then you go to and from with what your pattern tells you of. So I take that and then I got started and that I crocheted and crocheted for a couple of years and then I put it down and quit. That's when several years later my baby was born and that's when I started back again and I made her some little outfits and that was in 51. I crowed her some little jackets and little booties and cap and then I quit again and back in the the spring of 206 I started back again and I had to call somebody a friend of mine to see if they knew somebody that could help me get started again so they told me somebody at the crochet club and she came right over and so I joined the crochet club and then it's gone from there now. And since 206, I have made five pineapple crochet round tablecloths. This is one here. And they're 82 and one is 83 inches round across. 82 inches across. I carried it to the fair and I won at first place on it. That was the um, Georgia Fair in, Pe in Perry, Georgia. I worked for a nursery for several years and that's where I really got my love from was play it working with the flowers. I worked in a big greenhouse and the people would bring plants in and I'd repot them for them and keep them around a week. And I had more friends than I still have today that I met through the, uh, the nursery that I worked at. And my husband built me a greenhouse and I would take care of my plants during the winter in the greenhouse. I never did use any in the house. I just grew mine in the greenhouse and enjoyed them there. Oh, it's just nature. I'm closer to God when I'm out working in my yard or my greenhouse. And it's just seeing the, put a seed in the ground and see what it does. Nature, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful to take a plant out and see it small and put it in better, big, larger pot and good soil and then see that plant just just shine, just take over and become a beautiful plant. It, it's just something that's good for your heart and it's good for your soul. It is just, well, in other words, the only way I express it is it's just, I'm just, I love God and I know He's there. 
and he helps this all to happen. I just love to work in the yard. We had breakfast, dinner, and supper, three meals a day. And my mother cooked it in the kitchen. Three times a day she made meals. She made all of her vegetables, grew them in the garden, uh, take the corn cobs and shell the corn off and carry it to the mill to make mill to make our meal. But we did, and I remember the first loaf of light bread that I had. I was just a small girl then, and my daddy brought it home from the grocery store. We just had grocery stores for sugar and flour and fruit and stuff. We didn't have all this other stuff, just millions of things that's in the grocery store now. I saw all of that go from to the bottom right to the complete top and over. And the uh, only thing I got for Christmas was a little tiny doll, oranges and apples, lemon can stick candy and peppermint. That's what I got for Christmas. The boys didn't get anything. They got my mother would take a ball of rags and work them together and let them soak in kerosene for a week before Christmas. And my brothers would get out and play, but they had firecrackers and that's what they would play with. They'd throw that ball from one to the other and throw the firecrackers and listen. And we had sparklers, little box of smart uh, sparklers. That was Christmas for us back then. And I had an uncle and aunt and their family lived in Pelham, Georgia. And I thought they were rich, but they didn't have no more than than anybody else on the farm. They just happened to be, and my uncle was a salesman. He had bedspreads and sheets and stuff and pillars that he carried in the back of his car and went from house to house. And he would, they, he'd get, go around every so often and people would buy the bedspreads and stuff from him. We was all happy, but we didn't have anything. We didn't have anything. I saw the electric lights come in. I was a grown girl when they came about in the country in South Georgia. And we didn't have airplanes then. They never, I said, never saw an airplane. But I remember when they was testing the dirigible blimp, they called it. And my daddy was scared to death when we saw the first one and that was back in the early 40s. I can remember how excited he was. He did not know what was, well, the people just didn't know what it was up there. They'd never seen anything like it before. The people, they're nothing like they were back in those days. We had morals. We had love for the family. We had love for the other people, our neighbors and friends. We were more a civilized, America then. Now we're not civilized anymore. We're, we're going backwards. It's terrible, terrible. Mothers kill daughters. Daughters kill mothers. Sons kill fathers. What, what is happening to us? And especially Hollywood. That is a moral stricken town. Now they don't know what morals are. They got money and they go half naked or naked, who, who knows and who cares. It's terrible, terrible. But what can we do about it? You'll probably scratch, take that and scratch it out, but that's okay. <laughs> you had friends back then, really genuine friends. And people that loved you. I mean, people loved each other back then. They were in a, too big of a hurry to stop and say, I love you. That's true, that's true. Too big of it. They don't stop and smell the roses or smell the flowers. Well, it's taking, it's like the other things. It is beyond my even visualizing. I have no idea how any of it works. As one of my neighbors tells me that 
you and I are not out, we are not in the world anymore. We are, we are back, so we can't use telephones and we can't use nothing anymore the way that it's making it. It's unbelievable, unbelievable that we don't hardly know how to walk, talk on the telephone now. That's all we know. We don't know nothing about the computers. We don't know anything. We just know that we can't use them. Everybody else is talking to each other by the computer. Like I told Gloria that I was going to give all my grandchildren to her because they called, called her or sent telephone me email messages to her mm -hmm. and uh, she said I'll take them I'll take them and so uh, I don't know how to use a computer never will know I don't want to know it's like I told you about my telephone where in the world does it who does it I set my at the changing of the t uh, time I do my clocks set them back or set them up but the next morning I get up, my telephone's been changed, my cell phone. It's been changed to the right time, back or forward. Now, where did that come from? I don't know. And it's just all just really, it's really a madhouse now. I mean, it's just altogether a different life. It's nothing like living on a farm. There's nothing like living on a farm. I was the, the happiest child in the world. I'm Hazel Floyd. I was born in 1924 in Grady County, Cairo, Georgia. I'm 86 years old and I've lived a long, wonderful life.